Well, they ask him simply, what is the greatest commandment? Think about that for a moment. In your life today, in the way that you live your life, what is the greatest rule that you follow? What is the one rule that seems to encapsulate everything that you do? That's a big question, isn't it? You'd think that this would take some thought. It would take some thinking. You'd have to kind of weigh up your whole life and see, you know, who are you? What have you been called to do? How do I act towards others? But for Jesus, it wasn't really that hard because what they were testing him on was his knowledge of God's relationship with us. They were testing him on, well, this question's been asked before and it's been answered. God himself has answered it. The greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all that you are, every fiber of your being. Love the Lord who is your God. I want you to think about that just for a moment. Because if you think about all the things you do in the course of a day, if you think about all the things you do in the course of your work week, the one thing that is the greatest verb, right? The greatest verb, the greatest action word, the one thing that you can do, what is that verb according to Jesus? It's love. Is that the one verb that encapsulates all of who you are and all the things that you do? No, it probably isn't, is it? It's probably like perseverance, getting things done. You know, all these other verbs, go and do, mow the lawn. Anybody else going to mow the lawn today, right? There's, there's all kinds of verbs that are going to happen. Anybody else have to do an entire big checklist to make Mother's Day work really well in your house? I know many of us are in that, right? There's lots of verbs of things that you're going to do today. But if they don't serve a greater purpose, if they don't serve the greatest verb of them all, then they're hollow. The greatest commandment of all starts with the biggest verb of all, the most important one, and it's love. It's love. So Jesus starts there. He says, look, the greatest thing that you can do in all of your life is to love the Lord your God with every fiber of your being. At all times, in all places, in all situations, know that the Lord your God is there, that he loves you, and that you can love him in return. But the second one, that follows directly from that, also starts with the same verb. What is it? It's to love your neighbor as yourself. Have you guys heard? I mean, this is, this is kind of common. This is what we hear in just regular, everyday stuff. Love your neighbor as yourself. Golden rule, right? It kind of follows this one, though. They work together. What is the greatest way to live your life, Jesus says? To love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. This vertical relationship with God is number one, and the vertical relation, and the horizontal relationship with your neighbors is number two. They follow together. Where do you fit in this? Where does it say to love yourself in here? Is it included? Not really. No. It's all about looking outside of yourself, seeing how much you are loved by God and loving Him in return, and seeing the people around you as people worthy of love. When we focus our eyes outward, we start to see how God makes his way in our lives and what he calls us to do. And as we're busy doing all of that, we start to realize who we are. This is how we get to the core of who I am. All right. So that's from Matthew. What does love have to do with all of this? At the very end of Jesus' explanation, he says this, and all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. What does he mean by all of the law and the prophets hang on this? What he's saying is that everything that God teaches, every way that God relates to people, humanity, all of creation are wrapped up in love. If you've ever thought before that you were not worthy of God, that the things that you've done in your life have pushed you so far away from him that you can't possibly, there's no way he could ever be pleased with you. Know this, God's first response to you is not using any other verb, not judgment, not condemnation, not anything like that. The first way that he relates to you is love. 